beautiful documentary. I think when I when I first heard about Lost in France and, and it was a music documentary, I was obviously very excited because I thought it was about Buddy Tyler's 1976 hit. Mm. But even better, it's about the great Chemical Underground. The Scottish label started in 1994. The great hook you have here is that 20 years after the uh, the event, the guys go back to France for their magical mm. mystery tour or showcase gig in 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 in, in, in uh, 1996 or 1997, right? Yeah. Because uh, th there is a lot to be kind of uh, mined when, when anybody goes back and looks at their youth and looks at their uh, pivotal mm. moment in their life. For you, as Stuart Henderson said, you know, wh why did you do this? Kind of, he was wondering at, uh, at the end of the documentary and mm. realised by the end of it why. But did you know when you started out, well, oh, this is what I'm doing here, this is what I want to say? Um, I suppose you discovered uh, on your way um, as you go through the process of, of making the film. Um, I knew that I wanted the film to be about the Glasgow music scene that I grew up um, loving the music from and um, I knew I wanted to celebrate Chemical Underground in a way too but I suppose I didn't know how much it would become about what's happened in the music industry since. Uh, that was always going to be a part of it because it was something that was just there in front of us um, but the sort of collapse in sales of records and, and CDs and, and music in general and what it's done to the record industry that really in many respects that is uh, one of the, the main points of the film so that became a, I sort of discovered that as we went we knew that would be a part of it but um, I think that's probably the most important message in, in the film that and the, the similar sort of commentary on social welfare and yeah. the relation to that and um, making music in music history there's always these wonderful moments where whether it be you know stiff records or ch chests or good vibrations or, or Motown just a moment that defines you know a, 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 not only a place but a sound and, and, and a sense of of you know zeitgeist that this is the sound of that particular era now chemical underground would be a, a label that i'm vaguely familiar with i'm guessing the same for a lot of people that wouldn't necessarily they know mogwai for sure mm. but i found out like people like uh, rm hubbard almost like the bastard son of john martin i just yeah. thought he was incredible yeah. and and then obviously the delgados who started the, the label in 1994 and and and, uh, and we've got alex from from franz ferdinand Arbstrap, of course, too. there we go great great band yeah. and, and 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 that sort of um sense of you turning around to funding and saying well this is this is uh who the this is what i'm gonna this is the story mm. i'm gonna tell i'm guessing that was difficult because there, there's uh there, they'd, they'd like a million seller to be there to sort of yeah. say to them well we tell this. that's yeah that is very true um it's always i suppose difficult um and with any project going to get funding, there's just so there's so little, and so many people are wanting to make films and um, can make films. But um, I suppose, well, Alex was a big draw. Right. Um, but I was lucky enough. I've always been lucky. The Irish Film Board have been great. Um, I, I work very slowly, and it took it took me four years really to make this. But um, I remember meeting Keith Potter quite early on when he just started in the film board, and Keith's a great guy. And I think the film board do. You know, to take projects on their merit, and it's not always about is this going to make a lot of money or you know does this already have a big audience. But they do, they do want to support young people making, you know, um, sort of personal and different filmmaking. And I think there there needs to be room for that, and I'm glad there isn't with the Irish Film Board. Um, and Keith was a music fan anyway; he's a big music fan. And when you pitch something like that, I think you you try to emphasize the sort of themes that are universal rather than the uh, you know. Spe specific nature of the music or what style of music it would be. I think you need to look at these sort of things as in a broader sense. Um, I always like to think that a, a good music film anyway isn't really about music. Right. It's about people, you know. And mm -hmm. um, here you have a story of people who grew up together who started out doing something really for fun and it took over and became their lives. But all their careers or whatever you want to call them went in different sort of places and some were really successful, some less so. Um, but it's really about, I suppose it's about like what, on, on one level, you know, what would you do if you could, could go back and look at your past again? You know, most people, we don't get a chance to do that. We don't get a chance to take stock and maybe, you know, have a think about our lives in, a, in, a, in that sort of way. And I think when you offer people a chance to do that in a documentary film, it, you're always surprised by what you get because, you, you know, you don't know. You know, all you can do is sort of set up put people in a place and set a scenario up and hope that you get what you want. It's a bit like knocking dom dominoes, you know? Sometimes they don't always fall over. So. Well, that, that, that's, I think for all of them, it's, it's sort of uncharted territory so to return to a lost weekend. And, and it's almost like returning to a, a passionate love affair and, and you're mm. sort of remembering and rekindling those moments. They, they've returned to France, unplugged somewhat a little bit and then uh, maybe on drugged as well. There's, yeah. there's the sense that they're a lot, you know, as, one, as Stuart says, mm. they're uh, definitely older and possibly wiser. Mm. Um, was there ever a time when you, when for them and for you, even just that sort of spinal tap around the graveyard, too much fucking perspective, kind of kicking, and where that, where it's it's quite easy to get nostalgic and quite easy to yeah. Keep, um, uh, I think 
to allow them the space to do that was important because then you get the other stuff. Um, but I didn't. It's interesting because I suppose in some senses the, the obviously the the journey back is sort of like a, a non-fiction MacGuffin. You know, it's a device to get the guys yeah. talking. If I'm completely honest, the trip to Meron isn't necessarily that important. Right. It's important in the context of the film, and of course it's important to them as people. Yeah. But for, for me as a filmmaker, it was a way of getting them to talk. I knew that if I if we stayed in Glasgow, I wouldn't get what I wanted. I, need right. to, I needed to bring them out of there and give them space to reflect on their lives there in Glasgow. And in Glasgow, I knew we wouldn't get the same thing. And also as well, um, because France is sort of the, the another bonus was because France was important to them and it was part of their past that it still had a link to Glasgow so I was getting the best of both worlds you know. I know that Stuart from Mogwai kind of spoke about their early kind of uh, he said that pivotal first six months of 1996 when it all came together for them and, and his kind of belief that that you kept the music and the fun separate that he just mm. sort of, he, mm. he kind of basically took the emotional resonance of the music is to be very very important yeah and I wonder if that's key to, to why Chemical Underground connected whether they were just you know, young and fresh, and and, and, and had a lot to, to to shout about that that connected to John Peel and Enemy mm. and, and so forth. Or I don't know if it's that sort of. There is a certain kind of such a thing well, that you say. Well, this is Chemical mm. Underground's kind of way they operate. This is their. Well, sound. I think they were heavily influenced by Factory, and I think right. uh, Emma mentions that in the film. But also by American hardcore, and um, you know, like bands like Smog, um, Shellac, um, Big Black, all those sort of bands. I think that right. sort of attitude, even the sort of Fugazi thing, which was isn't really spoken about, but there was this militant approach to music where music they took it seriously and it was a political dimension to it too you know doing it yourself not going to London so um, I think it's while it happened at the same time as Britpop it was completely different right, um, right. you know for better I think as well oh yeah well I mean it sounds uh, kind of uh, anal to say but but when something is sort of somewhat still underground there's that, that real belief and they're still there that's a real sign that it is mm. not about well hopefully we'll get to number one before yeah. our rivals do and yeah and um, but that idea that you mentioned it too that it is a tough time as as, as uh our, our boy uh, mr henderson says you're Stuart from the uh, delgados who as we said started the label they haven't flown anybody anywhere for eight years there's a real mm. sign of that's how the industry is that that records you know don't sell anywhere near the numbers that they do and there's obviously a worry then that they it, 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 to, to survive and, and, and it's yeah. a climate do you believe that, as he says, it's the end of an epic, uh, epoch, uh, epoch, I should say, epoch, and, and the beginning of a, another? And yeah, I think he's right. I think, if anything, we probably even hold back a bit. I think right. it doesn't look good at the minute. Um, Would vinyl save uh, a few labels like I this? I don't think no, so, no. 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 I don't think it sells in the certain numbers it needs to. Right. Like if you can, if, uh, from the figures I've been given, um, Music um, sales like are down ten percent on what the or down to ten percent what they were ten years ago, right. and then they were ten percent of what they were ten years before that. Uh -huh. If you had this sort of fall off in any other like major industri industry like the car industry or something like that, there'd be government intervention. Right. But um, it's completely decimated. It. It's different if you're Adele, yeah, and you're on you know War Warner or something like that. Yeah. But th what we're talking about is. You know, will people be able to set up record labels like Chemical in the future? And if they do that, will they make a living off it and be able to continue doing it, or will it just have to be a hobby? And it looks unlikely that there'll be many more chemicals, to be honest. Well, as with film, you mean the, the Stuart sort of argument that, that the chance of a band being given two or three albums to mm. get their get themselves to that point where yeah. they just know what they're doing and they, and they make that gr glorious record that yeah. they knew they had in them. That is far less likely because yeah. there isn't going to be a second or third album for those bands. People don't have time. Yeah. You know, there's a reason um, you know bands used to go in the studio and take one or two years to make an album. Right. You know, it's a craft, and if you don't have the time to work on your craft, um, you know, I find that I I constantly have to do um, you know other work to to make to make a living and stuff like that. And what it's necessary, and I don't mind doing it, but it get really gets in the way of the work you you'd like to be doing. Right. So then it ends up taking four years to make a film, you know. Well, and it would be nice to focus on stuff for a while. I'm not not about me, but yeah. I do think it's important, as sure it says in the film, that people. If people don't have the chance to develop and you know work in their crafts, then they're not going to they're not going to make that album that is is in them, you know, because they're not going to get a chance. And a lot of the bands that are, are very popular now, even you could argue the National and people like that, their first their first record is not a remarkable thing, but by their tour it was. Yeah. So you need time. 
Well, do you think this 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 um, this generation of, of, of everything being online and there is a great democracy about that in that mm. a lot of that sort of access to putting your music out there is now free. Yeah. Um, it does change the the, uh, the, 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 uh, the way music is presented to us. There isn't that Thursday evening kind of rush yeah. of who's who's the latest kind of band that we want to hear. It also has the uh, million monkeys with a million typewriters or a million guitars and synthesizers yeah. banging away as well. Did Stuart have any optimism? In the, the, uh, optimism? Did he sort of feel well? There's a new kind of you know chemical underground. Maybe will happen. A mm. new, maybe I, it's just the individuals. To be honest, um, not when, when we speak. But ah, did he cry? No, he didn't cry. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, he didn't cry. I was trying to make him, but he didn't. But um, um, I think. I'm sure that I, I do think that somehow we'll have to come up with something. Something will have to change if we want to have uh, you know a music industry worth having and you know records coming out. We're going to all have to change our attitude towards this, yeah. um, and we need to start, I suppose, looking at file sharing and downloading like that is actually stealing. Sure. And um, I know sometimes we all justify it to ourselves and we've all done it and we've all done le- downloaded movies and maybe go to Hollywood movie. It's okay, yeah. but I do think we need to have an open and honest discussion about. You know what actually happens, to people, when they sit beside a, a computer. Right. Um, you know, you wouldn't go into uh, HMV or di- Golden Discs and shove loads of CDs down your underpants and walk out and think I it's used okay. To, but I used to, to but yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> there's not as many <laughs> record stores anymore. Um, but you know what I mean. For your for yourself to know, you you, you two um, documented out in 2012. Mm. Um, you, 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 the um, uh, an exile's home in the Bronx, which was about those sort of connecting to their Irish roots and, yeah. and playing Gaelic football and so forth. Also Luke Haynes from the Auteurs and, and, and Black Clock Recorder, you did a documentary with him in the same year. I got the title right, Art Will Save the World. Mm. So I mean, that, that was quite a busy year for you to sort of come out with your two documentaries in yeah. the first year. I don't know what, what, how you've been kind of plotting that or how that sort of came about. That you, you no, it's just by chance really. Um, right. My cousin uh, has a production company in New York and he they were making um, a documentary on the guys, the footballers over there. And they asked me to help um, direct it, um, and uh, Stephen was my co-director on that. Um, and it just so happened that it came out later that year. To be honest, uh, Art Received World wasn't. I'm very proud of the film, and um, I'll hopefully we'll get it released soon. But it wasn't the most pleasant experience okay. to make. You know, it was my right. first ever film. I didn't know what I was doing really, and it was difficult. And maybe, uh, perhaps, um, it could have gone a bit better um, in the film getting out there, sort of sense. But. We're still working on that, so hopefully, and um, yeah, just everything has been luck so far. Just luck. I was lucky to get to meet Luke and be able to make um, that film, and I was lucky that I got to make that specifically a film about him because he was—he's a really interesting guy and a brilliant musician, and um, just someone who's a bit different, and someone that I could maybe project a lot of—I don't know—maybe the more self-destructive ele- elements of myself into the film, you know, and I saw a lot of myself in him in a way, not that I'm in any way as talented, but um, everything's been luck so far, but if I hadn't made that film at Luke, I don't think I would have had to make this one. It, it, it got me a lot of good fate, you know. We should mention that, that, uh, that, this, that this movie, Lost in France, is getting very good reviews in the great Sight and Sound. There's a, there's a oh, yeah, review, yeah. probably one of the few, if not the only, truly kind of... Uh, um, um, you know, film lovers kind of magazine yep. compared to Empires and all those uh, uh, rags. That that feeling of, of it being well received is that is that c- giving you any indication yet? Oh, this is going to be you know this is going to have an effect. Hopefully for Chemical Underground because I went. And no, hopefully, a few hopefully for Chemical. Yeah, a lot of people said that. Well, yeah. As you said to me, that they went and uh, bought a few records afterwards. Right. Um, and for you then, for for, for well, your I hope own it, career, would you uh, um, have signed work- yet? I'm working on um, my next film. Um, I'm making it with Adrian Crowley. He's um, oh, right, an Irish right. singer songwriter, really talented guy. Yeah. Um, so I'm working on that, and hopefully I'll finish that this year, and then hopefully I can make uh, another. Uh, I want to continue doing this. You know, it's it's the only thing that really makes me happy, and it's um, I do find it quite stressful, but that's my nature, and I'd love to. I just want to be able to keep doing it. Um, as long as the films are good and people like them, you know, that's important. And is it your area, you, you feel, is, is documentary and, and specifically maybe music? Um, at, the mi- at the minute, yeah. I just right. sort of fell into that, though. Um, I don't really like, you know, putting films into little boxes and going, sure. I, you know, I re- I re- I've, uh, possibly because I make them, but it really bothers me, the whole, you know, music doc thing. Okay. Um, sure. Because music docs, most of my... A lot of my favorite films are music docs, you know, um, and I do think it can be used in a disparaging way sometimes. Um, like a good film is a good film. Yeah. And I remember Goddard once said, um, "Every good film is a documentary," um, you know, because it's a document of truth in some way. Sure. Um, 
Yeah, so I don't know. I, I think I would like to make fiction films at some point, but um, a lot of my non-fiction films are, have as much fiction as, you know, <laughs> as scripted stuff. So. And, and w w finally, just to, just to put you on the spot, would you have a favourite record? I don't know if you, it's such a thing, because you, you seem like a, uh, somebody who does enjoy yeah, their music. Yeah, I probably would. Um, give me a second <laughs> here. Does it have to be off chemical? Or? It's all, all, the, all the big, bad world out there that there's so um, much gorgeous... Uh, We've already established just beforehand that the Beatles are. Yeah, I'd probably go with. Um, well, yeah, I think the Beatles probably <laughs> are. Um, but I'd probably pick something by Bill Callahan, maybe uh, oh, Apocalypse. Right. Oh, very good. From last very few years, which really blew my mind. Um, and, and I think the Holy Bible by the Manics, I know they're not very right. popular, so I, I would mention that because I, I know it gets up people's well, nose. It's great to talk to. There's, there's a, so much. You know, so well, they have a film. Um, I think there's a new film coming out uh, about the Holy Bible now. Selfish. Yeah, I did contact them a while ago, but I never heard back. <laughs> Well, I wish you the best of luck. A wonderful, wonderful film. And, uh, Thanks, Paul. And we encourage people not only to go and see your film, but to, to go and check out Chemical Underground.